So I said, for real? Because uh, I'd have some questions for Mrs. Manning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, hey, how's it going, guys? Roger Kier rants about tech. If you're new here, welcome. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. And uh, you may as well go ahead and hit the like button for me, too. All right, so this is going to be the second update to my Pinstar eNote series where I'm going to discuss the apps. Uh, I'm also going to discuss the services. And in some more detail, I'll discuss the notes app, reader app, and to a smaller extent, the calendar app as well. So this video is just gonna be an overview of all the apps and I'm gonna to touch on the calendar app in a little more detail. All right, let's jump right into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to touch on are the apps. So let's go ahead and go to the app drawer here. All the native apps you see here are the apps that come with the device. And these are the apps right here that you have to install individually. And we'll talk about those a little bit later. So going back to the native apps, up first, we have Wi-Fi transfer, which we'll talk more about Wi-Fi transfer when we talk about the services section of the video. We have browser here, which is just a standard browser native to this particular operating system. Nothing special here, really. Next up, we have Notepad here. And Notepad is not like the Notes app where you write your notes. This is a place for you to type your notes or use a global handwriting box to input text into the text box that you see here. Next up, we have the email app, which is just a normal email client and works like most email clients do as well. Nothing special there. And though the email app does have a widget on the home screen, it's not very useful because it just doesn't update enough to let you know that you actually have email. And though there's nothing wrong with the email app, it's just kind of sluggish and doesn't offer anything above and beyond what you would get in any other email client. So there's nothing really to encourage its use. Next up, we have the player app. One thing I find unique about this player app above and beyond the fact that it can play music, it can also transcribe lyrics for songs and any other type of audio that you might have in here. The calendar app we'll cover later and next is the calculator app. The only thing special about this is that you get a scientific calculator, which I think is pretty nice. Next up we have account, which we'll also go over later. After that, we have settings, which we went over in the last video. Next up, we have manual, which is just a brief manual of the device. And when I say brief, I really mean it. So there's not very much to this manual. It doesn't really dive below surface level. So good luck getting help with those deeper menu options. I find that doing an internet search would do you much better. And lastly, we have cloud drives, which we'll go over in the services section of this video. But essentially, it's for backing up your notes from this particular device. All right, so that was a look at the native apps on the device. And before we go on to look at some of the apps in greater detail, let's go ahead and look at the non-native apps we have on the device, which we do by going to the installed apps here. Once here, you'll see all of your non-native apps that you've installed yourself. Now, this device doesn't come with an app store where you can just download third-party apps and put them onto the device. You actually have to download the APKs for the apps and then sideload the apps onto the device that way. I know it's not the most convenient system, but at least you get some of the third-party apps you want on the device. And for what I understand from Pinstar, the Microsoft Office Android apps work great on this device and allow you to work on those documents natively right on the eNote. But right here, we only have one third-party app and that's gonna be Chromium. And it came with this third-party app. I didn't sideload it myself. Um, I haven't tried sideloading any apps onto this particular device. It's really not my thing. But if you guys want to see me try that procedure and you want to see what some third-party apps may look like on this device, drop it in the comments and uh, we'll see if we can get that video made for you. So that's your native and non-native apps for this particular device. And now that we've talked about the apps as a whole, let's go ahead and dive deeper into three of the apps that I wanna bring attention to, which would be the calendar app, the notes app, and the reader app. And we'll start off with the calendar app. The first thing we see is a navigation bar up top here, and we have the back button here. We have the today icon. We have the navigation buttons for going between months back and forth right here. If we touch the actual year, we get to pick the month and scroll through the actual year. Next, we have the options button here where you can do a calendar search for events. You can sync the clouds and you can search your settings here, which basically gives you event notifications, banner notifications, default alert times, and calendar screensaver, which will let you set the calendar as a screensaver, which won't actually set your actual calendar as a screensaver. It just puts the date month and time on the screen for you, which I guess is okay, but it implies something way greater than that. 
All right, so here's the calendar right here. And essentially the calendar has three different windows. The first window here is gonna be your month view. The second window here is gonna be your view for the day that shows you all of your events for that day. This next window over here is gonna be your view for that particular event you have selected. So that'll change with the particular event. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the month view here. And you may notice that there are dots by certain days. If you see a dot by a certain day, that denotes that there is an event on that particular day. The next thing you're gonna notice here is the squiggly lines as well. The squiggly lines denote exclusive memos. And exclusive memos are exclusive to particular events. And what that means is this. We have a particular event right here, which is Hello World 2. Now, I have this clip here which tells me there's an exclusive memo with this particular note. Now I can write a note for a particular day or a memo for a particular day. So if this particular event right here doesn't have that paper clip by it which says that any memo that you see with this particular uh, event is a memo for the whole day, not a memo for that particular event. So I can write a memo here, hello, and you won't see that hello when I go to the get started memo. It has its own memos and you won't see that, that memo or any other memos in this hello world 2 memo because it has that clip saying that the memos associated with it are exclusive to it. Now if I were to create another event down here, so let's go ahead and do that. So it says create an exclusive memo. We'll uncheck that, which means any memo associated with this particular event will be a memo associated with that day, not the event. So we'll click OK. Now, both of these memos here that don't have the exclusive paperclip associated with them have the same memo because they have the today memo rather than a memo exclusive to that particular event. And that's the way the exclusive memo box works. Next up, we have these bookmarked corners right here on the days. What that means is that that particular event has been pinned. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I haven't been able to see if it rolls over into another day or if it's just exclusive to that one particular event that it's pinned. Uh, it doesn't have any particular rhyme or reason. I couldn't find anything online and there's nothing in the manual for it, but I have reached out to the developers and as soon as they give me a reply to what that means, I'll update this particular video. Now your day view here, are all of your events that you've created for that particular day. And to create an event, you hit the plus sign right here, just like we did before. You can make it an all day event. You can change the time that it starts, the time that, time that it ends. Uh, again, you can make it an exclusive memo or a non-exclusive memo. You can add the content to this particular event and push OK and you got your event. And you can add as many events as you want to to this particular day. Now, once you have your event, like I showed before, you can write a memo for this particular event. You can pin it with this particular icon right here. With this icon, you can convert whatever handwritten memo you have here to text and it will also make that an event of its own. You have your marker icon here, your eraser icon, you have your trash icon here to where you can delete the whole memo page and you can add an extra memo page with this icon right here. And just a quick note, when you create a memo, you have to change the day and then go back to that day for that particular memo to show up. Else you sometimes don't see it here in the day view for your events. And just a couple more notes about the calendar app. It doesn't integrate with other mail clients like Gmail or Outlook. And also it doesn't share information with the notes app or any other app on the device, which I think is a huge miss for a native app that has access to all the information and could probably use it in some way, um, but just does not. All right, everyone, that's gonna be it for the app overview and speaking more specifically about the calendar app. The next video, we're just gonna focus solely on the notes app. All right, go ahead and like if you like, subscribe if you wanna see more, and uh, until next time, take care. Yeah, that surprised me. How long has it been, 15 years?